Hey there, I'm Cruzen, and this is a quick tutorial on designing and flying spaceplane SSTOs. I see a lot of players who have problems with SSTOs who are making designs that are very large and heavy with 2 to 6 engines. The name of the game with SSTOs is efficiency, and when you're first learning, you want to start small. You'd be surprised at just how small you can make an SSTO and still get to orbit. So let's jump right in by heading to the spaceplane hangar. So I like to start things off with the Mark 1 cockpit. I choose it purely for looks, but it is one of the heavier single Kerbal cockpits there is, making it less efficient. Feel free to choose a smaller cockpit if you like. Next up, we need a reaction wheel. Choose the inline reaction wheel as it is the lighter of the two options. This will help us with controlling the plane at high altitudes and in space. For fuel, you don't need very much, and this is where most designs start going wrong. This FL-T400 tank is more than enough and will actually be draining excess fuel from it before we go on. For design that will be purely for getting to orbit and nothing else, we can go with about 140 liters of liquid fuel and 110 liters of oxidizer. This is still overkill, but it leaves a lot of wiggle room. Fully fueled, this design can hop up to Minmus or do a double round trip to orbit. The bread and butter of any space plane SSTO is the turbojet engine. Slap one on there as it is highly efficient and powerful. A lot of people choose the rapier when they're first learning, but that's a mistake. If you want to see a side-by-side -side comparison of a turbojet versus a rapier, check out a video Veos made that talks about it. I plan to make a video of my own to go into more detail in the future though. For something this small, you really only need one set of delta wings. I choose to flip them to make the plane a little narrower. There's no advantage to doing this, but I think it looks better for something this small. Next up, we need something to mount the intakes and engines to. There are a ton of ways to go about this, but I choose to use the smaller FL-T100 tanks, as they are very light and make for easy mounting. Don't worry about mounting them just yet, and just place them on top of the wings without symmetry on. We'll build the assembly first and then put them into place later. This makes building things easier. On the back, place a FL-A10 adapter, which is what we will mount the rocket engines to. This isn't necessary, but I add it to make it look good. If you want a slightly more efficient design, you can leave these off. The rocket you want to use is the Rockamax 48-7S, as it is arguably the best in the game. It has a great thrust to weight ratio and is perfect for SSTO designs. Now grab the assembly with the T100 tank and turn the symmetry on. Rotate it sideways until it clips halfway through the wing like this and you're good to go. Place it wherever you like. Next up is the other vital component for an SSTO, which is the ram air intake. You can design an SSTO using the other two intake options, but this is by far the best one to choose and is purpose built for this application. Place these onto the front of the T100 tank. This design will only need a 2 to 1 intake ratio, so don't worry about adding any more. From here on out, you're just building a standard plane. Add control surfaces, landing gears, and a battery, and solar panels, or an RTG. If you need help with doing this, you can watch my video which covers building planes in KSB, but for this video, I'm assuming you've watched those up to this point. With the way the rocket engines are mounted, you'll need to add fuel lines to make sure they work. Fortunately, this design doesn't require anything fancy, just a two-way fuel line setup. Place one line going from the center to the outer tanks, and another going from the outer tanks back to the center. Finally, set up action groups to toggle your rocket engines and your turbojet separately. Save your design and you're ready to start flying. Now I have covered how to fly high altitude designs before, so in the spirit of not repeating myself, I recommend you watch that video as it will guide you on how to climb and avoid flaming out. That being said, this design won't flame out until well after you've hit orbital speeds. I'll walk you through an easy ascent profile for getting this SSTO to space. Keep in mind that this is a purely a guideline and you don't need to strictly adhere to these numbers. The first step is the initial climb. Pitch up to 60 degrees and stay there until you reach 10 kilometers. At 10 kilometers is the first point where you will begin to lose intake air. Once you hit 10 kilometers, pitch down to about 35 degrees. Some designs won't like the rapid change in pitch, so feel free to gradually pitch down if you like. Continue at 35 degrees until you reach about 15 kilometers, where you'll want to pitch down to 10 degrees. This is where you'll begin to gain a ton of speed as we are reaching the maximum output for the turbojet. It peaks in thrust once you hit 1000 meters per second, so being pitched low during this time lets us utilize this power band to its full potential. Stay pitched at 10 degrees until you reach 25 to 27 kilometers, and then pitch down to 0 to 5 degrees. This is the range where you will gain the rest of the speed needed to reach orbit. The single turbojet engine will keep operating at full throttle until about 35 to 36 kilometers, so once you begin flaming out, feel free to throttle back. 
but by that time you should have reached well over 2100 meters per second surface speed. I prefer to keep the speed readout in terms of surface velocity, but it will automatically change to orbital velocity at 35 kilometers. Just click the readout to cycle between the two readings. Switch to your map view and open up the nav ball so you can continue controlling your SSTO. You should have an apoapsis above 70 kilometers at this point, if everything has been done correctly. I like to click on the apoapsis and periapsis markers so I can see what they are the whole time. When your apoapsis drops, you've flamed out, so just throttle back until it begins rising again. The more time you spend on jets pushing your apoapsis higher will help with efficiency, but you're more than welcome to just cut the jets and cruise up to your apoapsis. Switch back to your ship view and toggle off your jet and engage your rockets. Flip back to the map view and once you're near your apoapsis, fire up the engines and circularize. You can also use maneuver nodes if you like. Congratulations! You've made it to orbit with an SSTO and tons of fuel left to spare. As I said before, when fully fueled, this design is enough fuel to do two round trips to orbit without refueling or even go to the moon or Minmus if you like. Now that you've got the basic design to work off of, feel free to modify and scale it up or down to meet your needs. The next video will cover how to get larger SSTOs into orbit, as things get increasingly difficult the larger you make your designs. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope I was able to help. Until next time, take it easy.